Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're gonna be watching In Your Dream on the Animage and I'm gonna show you guys how to play the current version of Animage. I also recently on the Gimli website made a video where I talked about mind controls offlane Animage, so if you're interested in that, go check it out. But in today's video, we're gonna be covering an Animage that goes Orb of Corrosion and Diffusal Blade. Not as his first two items, Corrosion is actually his first item. He goes Diffusal a little bit later on. It's a Battle Fury into Manta into Diffusal build that is actually quite potent. So I wanna talk about when to pick Animage, what to do on this hero, and essentially my thoughts on this new item build so that you guys can basically dominate on Animage. And so yeah, if you're excited for today's video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and literally every single day for the Game League website, we're pumping out content like really good stuff that's going to help you get to the next level. If you're stuck, you don't know like why you're not gaining rank and you think, oh, it's my teammates or I don't know what it is. Is it my items? Is it my mentality? Is it my skill build, my talent build? I'm going to help you get a much more clear picture over on the website. So click the link down below, sign up and I'll see you guys there. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that he has an orb of corrosion. Now, I think in most lanes, honestly, this is a great item. The reason why you can start with orb of corrosion and go essentially the same item build that he went is because this hero trades incredibly well at level 1, and in winning lanes, it just indefinitely trades well. So the first thing besides this Orb of Venom that I want to talk about is when to pick Animage. I honestly think that in 99% of games, this hero is optimally picked as a last pick. Now you could say, Speed, that's the case for every hero, right? Like, I want to last pick every hero. The thing is, I think Animage is particularly good as a last pick. He always kind of has been, this isn't really new news. But if you aren't too familiar with the hero or you just haven't thought about this as of late, it's important to understand and think about. Because in this lane, Clock is not good against Animage. Why? Because Clock has to get in your face to do damage. This is horrible against Mana Break. You do not want to trade into Mana Break at the early levels. That is why ranged heroes that can kite Animage are generally much better against him or melee heroes that can push him away. Something like Mars I, I think is much better against Am than something like Pango that essentially has to get in your face to... to either cast spells or just do damage to you in general. Because you'll see in this clip here, as he proceeds through the lane, the main gist of Animage is as follows. Keep your HP as high as humanly possible. If you take 50 damage, eat a tango. If you take 100 damage, you better eat a tango. Essentially, you just want to keep your HP at a high level and slowly chip the enemy down. If you are in a very, very favorable lane, like he is in this game, he literally has a Death Prophet position 5, a top tier laner, against a mediocre Clock, right? Clock doesn't trade well into DP or into Animage, and then a Pango, which is a super mediocre hero against AM and lane. As a result, I think it is crucial that you do what he does here, which is walk up, do not draw creep aggro until you're in attack range, and then hit them. That's it. Walk up, you're gonna notice he's gonna walk up, doesn't hit until he's literally in range. This causes none of the creeps to aggro to him. This is gonna save you a lot of HP in the long run. These type of small efficiencies really add up, but he's gonna hit, move, hit, move, hit, move, and they buffed Animage in the recent patch in the regard where if you burn someone's mana, they get slowed. At level two, it's a 20% slow. It obviously works quite well with Orb of Venom, and it drops this Pangolier to 261 movement speed, basically putting him at, you know, snail's pace. I think it's actually lowered when he's mana burned, yeah. So it's 200 when he's mana burned, so. He can't even move at all, and this actually does end up in a kill, I believe, onto the Pangolier, and, and Clockwork almost dies as well. So it, it goes to show AM is one of the best laners in the game if you have a favorable lane. So that's why I like this hero's last pick. I generally would only want to pick AM in games where I know my matchups against me are good, right? <laughs> and my support is good, right? For instance, if I have an AA, I'm going to be a lot more skeptical of picking AM. You still can if your matchups against the enemy are good, Right, maybe the enemy's offlaner is something like, well, let's just use Pango for simplicity's sake. And the position four is like a tiny, right? A hero that doesn't do anything to you. Even with an AA in that case, you could pick AM if you have other good matchups. In this game in particular, he's against, well, you guessed it, Medusa. And yeah, essentially, once you pick up this Orb of Corrosion, which you should only rush in mega dominant lanes, please do not rush this in a bad lane. <laughs> you are gonna grief your game. If you rush this, <laughs> I know people are gonna do this. You're gonna be like, Speed told me to buy a Corrosion. And they're against like, they're, they're against some Viper that they couldn't bully early on. <laughs> it's like they're against like a Viper Hoodwink lane and they rush Corrosion. And then like, you know, to be fair, you could have go Corrosion in a lane like that if you're gonna like double down and just try to kill them. But if you don't know what you're doing, and you go Corrosion in a lane like that? Oh my god, you're going to feed so bad. But look at this clip here. A couple attacks just completely ruins the Pango's 
movement speed and mana pool and they chase him down beautiful body blocks by the death prophet and they pick up the kill and once again if your lane is dominating double down on winning the lane by going treads if your lane is a little bit more difficult in this case it's you know maybe your pace is slowed down a little bit as he picks up another kill my god uh then you can go for ring of health lane is winning treads and corrosion lane is difficult ring of health it's pretty easy to understand now in this game in particular he maxes out his q uh if you're gonna go an item build like this where you go treads corrosion i absolutely love this right i just think it's incredibly good at fighting early on and yes am can be played as a fighter within these early levels if he has a good laning stage so just keep this in mind outside of that am is exactly the same in terms of his mid game so i'm not really going to focus too much on the mid game essentially look for the open farm prioritize lane creeps heavily over jungle creeps am is not efficient in the jungle and therefore you need to ask your team to make plays and open the map for you this has always been the case for the hero I just wanted to reiterate it so you guys understand, hey, I need to prioritize lane creeps or my Battle Fury timing will suck, especially in this patch, man. Oh my god, with some of the camps, dude, like the Alpha Wolf camp, why does it make you do half damage, huh? Why does the, the troll slapper, whatever the creep is, smash the ground and do like 300 of your HP if you mess up? The, the, the creep camps are insane, dude. Like uh, the, the troll camp, you can't even kill the skeletons for your life. It's miserable. <laughs> so instead i love what he's doing splitting the map clearing the camps you want to push up as far as you can while you can that's basically the mantra of am push up as far as you can as long as you can one thing i will say though about this version of animage considering you have a corrosion and a pretty solid hp pool um especially if you opt for the nine strength talent like he does you can fight in the early game i even think that buying a magic wand on this hero while it's generally advised against because it slows down your major timings if you plan on like taking early skirmishes and we're going to see him do that here and take the nine, nine strength talent, I, I highly recommend buying wand and band of elven skin from Yasha and like doubling down on getting these early stat items because you actually do do a ton, right? Now that you slow people for 40% if you burn their mana entirely, you have a great way of chasing people down in the early game. Previously, Animage would get kited no matter what, right? Like it was impossible to stay on top of people. With this item build and skill build and change, you can actually do that and you can see he's going to show up to the fight. Love what he does here, doesn't blink in. You don't want to blink in unless you have to. If you blink in, you put yourself at a major risk of getting bursted and targeted. Try to walk into the fight. It sounds crazy. It's like, what? Walk into the fight? Yes. When you are an early game enemy mage with a mediocre HP pool, not bad, good for AM standards, but a mediocre HP pool, you know, don't, don't blink in. Save it to re, save it to, you know, reposition, save it to change targets. Like here, he sees a completely isolated Bane and chases him down. Good ulti onto the Bane secures the kill, finds the pango, wins his team a nice fight. But also keep in mind that that fight was based on his farming pattern. He didn't just run around the map and then like, you know, he's not running around the map just chasing people, waiting for a fight to break out, just like following his team. That is absolutely not what it is. For instance, like here, his team's getting invaded again, right? You might show up if the fight looks good. Maybe he'll jump the bane if his teammates decide to go in. They don't. Okay, I'm going to continue farming. Stick to the old game plan. Just keep in mind if someone overextends, you're very good at punishing now. You should, you know, look for that. All right, now let's get into the talents and then an upcoming fight where he gets his defusal timing. First of all, we talked about the level 10. Um, the only time I would take one second blink cooldown, it is a good talent, but the only time I would take it is if you know you're going to have like complete free farm and all you plan on doing is farming. There are games like that where maybe you think it's also just like a really bad game to fight in the early game. The enemy team just has like a ton of hero. Like let's say they just have like Lycan and you know, all these like unit heroes that you just don't do anything to, you just get evaporated by, then okay, ignore the fights, you can take blink cooldown. However, if they have like pick off, even if you're going to avoid fights, strength is good. So I would say strength is the more reliable of the two talents. At level 15, he takes max mana burn. Most people, from what I've seen, take mana void stun. And the only reason why is because you essentially ulti people to stun them. Uh, it lets you hit people quite a bit and you don't need a long time to kill people as I am. He decides to go for max mana burn. Obviously, this is largely targeting the Medusa, so I understand it this game, but once again, I, I, I think the more reliable is the Mana Void Stun. And finally, at level 20, Link Cast Range is always the way to go. It's just so incredibly good. At level 25, literally just depends on the game. If you're dying to magic damage, take the one on the right. If you're not, take the one on the left. All right, getting ahead here, he's going to hit an incredible timing on his three items here. A 24-minute three-item timing with Corrosion, keep in mind. And now you're going to see it really pay off in the fight. And I like to call this current version of Diffusal... A reliable basher. You see a lot of players go basher after Manta. I, I despise it. I hate it so much, man. 
You don't get any attack speed from it. Your mental illusions are weak as shit because they just have like strength and damage, which is not useful. Like you might be like, oh, it makes the illusions tankier. It's like, no, man, you're just jumping some backlaner anyway. You know, that shouldn't generally be a problem. This defusal is so much nicer because you get Angie. So you actually get 15 attack speed, 15 damage. The 15 attack speed is a big deal for me for the cost. And then you get a reliable slow, a reliable disable. You reliably can stay on top of people. Obviously, it's not great against certain mobility heroes, so you have to keep that in mind. But especially in a game like this where they don't have the best disengage, uh, especially when he's going to be targeting Medusa, this is incredibly good as a build. And you're going to see it pay off. Even just his right clicks with Diffusal and the Mana Burn talent. Take a look at, at, at uh, the Medusa's HP pool or Mana pool. It's already gone, but even with like no mana remaining, one auto burns 300 mana and does damage to her HP. So you can see how significant that actually is. And this whole idea of just focusing on burning people's mana is better than ever, right? Because of the fact that once again, your Q slows if they are out of mana. And so you're gonna see that here, Medusa literally cannot move. It's kind of like a Scotty slow. In fact, it is almost as good as a Scotty slow. Now, in terms of your major timings, I would say your fourth item timing is your biggest spike. Of course, you can fight on your Manta timing. You can fight on your Diffusal timing. It's all about just finding separated targets for AM. That's kind of the main gist of this hero in the, in the late game or even mid game, largely. It's looking for isolated targets. For instance, here with the blink, uh, the cast range talent and his abyssal, he's easily able to you know, take down this Pangolier, forces out a Bane reaction, catches that guy as well. So when you're playing AM, when you're, when you're winning the game, you really need to stare at your wards. If you're never getting these clean pickoffs as an AM player, and you're only just trying to go for like Dota Cinema, five man anime jolty team fight, it's like, Dude, <laughs> if that's the way you play the game, you're not going to gain MMR as, as an anime mage player. You're just not. Right? You need to look to do what he just did. What he just did is the high skill thing you can do in this hero. Outside of like, you know, pushing waves effectively, in my opinion. Um, yeah, either way, he's going to keep farming. Just never stop farming on this hero, obviously. Uh, but I like what he's doing here. All right, upcoming here, we're going to see the anime mage Medusa matchup really come into play. And you're going to see the mana burn with this build just decimate her um it's insane man like really it is it is quite insane so take a look at this clip here first things first when you get aegis as am it's really good to do what he's doing which is push up right push up and then cut across because when you cut across you can farm all the waves you can clear out the map you can gain map control and you're often going to bump into people because if they see you go top or they see you show top they're going to go bottom right so this is this is a great way to find big targets and in this case they find the best target the medusa and look what look at what happens when her BKB runs out, man. The mana pool is just going to evaporate, like gone, right? One go from the Mentas, basically gone. And you know, this is not him being able to hit cleanly at all. Often in pubs, you're gonna be able to hit cleanly because he almost gets off a huge mana void onto the deuce. So I think they take her down eventually anyway. I think the mana void is about to come out. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> man, and yeah, this this defusal enables these big ulties hardcore dude it does because you just bur you just insta burn people's mana i mean it's not like the craziest mana burn right Mo the majority of the mana burn is easily going to come from your passive and then this talent if you decide to go from that for that route the diffusal definitely helps especially when you're going abyssal you need the attack speed and it really pays off there as well as the slow all right and that's going to be the end of today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully you're inspired to play a little bit of am once again i don't think this is one of the top meta heroes of the patch i didn't say that uh, you, it, the, the title is probably, you know, broken AM build. Uh, <laughs> however, you need to keep in mind this hero is, is definitely something you should last pick in most games. You should look for your matchups. However, if you get the right matchups, the hero is potentially more dominant than ever. It's, it's capability in the laning stage to kill is ridiculous right now. It's ridiculous. It's one of the most annoying heroes to lean against in bad matchups. Like for instance, if you can pick it against Pango, even though the mid game matchup is kind of bad, Pango and lane. Sand King is like, ugh, God. Playing Sand King in AM is just a nightmare, dude. Any good AM just makes you want to break your items. I'm not kidding. <laughs> but all right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.